Section 13 of The Court and Character of King James, whereunto is now added the Court of King Charles, by Anthony Weldon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Certain Observations Before Queen Elizabeth's Death I cannot but admire God's providence in bringing peace when nothing was thought of but war, and now bringing a cruel war when nothing could be expected but peace. Peace with all foreign estates, peace at home. Not long before the death of Queen Elizabeth, all the discourse was in a secret whispering on whom the succession would fall. Some said the Lady Arabella, some the King of Scotland, and reason given pro and con on both sides. They who were for her, saying the Lady Arabella was a native and a maid, and that this kingdom never flourished more than under a maiden's reign. Others, for the Scot, said, that the king of scots was more near to the crown by descent farther off say others as being a stranger and that nation ever in hostility against us nor did the king himself believe he should have come in with a sheathed sword which appeared by that letter he produced of the earl of northumberland's that if he made any doubt hereof he would bring him forty thousand catholics should conduct him into england but the queen died the king comes in peaceably, even to the admiration of all foreign princes, and to the gnashing of their teeth. But the reason was, they had lived in obedience under a just sovereign, who was wont ever to say when any great man had oppressed a poor gentleman that petitioned her for redress against such oppression, when all the great lords and officers would hold together to support the suppressor, and trample upon the oppressed. My lords, quoth she, content you, I am queen of the valleys as well as of the hills, and I must not suffer the hills to our top, nor yet to overshade the valleys. A worthy saying, which if it had been imitated by her successors, these our miseries had never happened. But I say, and this is it I now drive at, her justice made her subjects to believe there could be no injustice in monarchy and that was it did facilitate the king's peaceable entrance in that tranquillity did the kingdom continue all his days and about fifteen years of his son's reign when behold there was nothing but jollity in the court as if saying to themselves who dares molest us the king now having a plentiful issue for let me tell you the king's issue made him and his courtiers the more to trample on the country gentry but behold when nothing but peace, peace, sudden destruction came on them and us unawares, and God sends such a war as no man could dream of. Now the corollary of all this is, the high injustice of church and state was the cause of this war. And oh, may not the continuing of that in any other government prove the continuance of this war, there being a far greater appearance of the continuance thereof than ever there was of the beginning. But God's will be done. End of section 13。section 14 of The Court and Character of King James, whereunto is now added The Court of King Charles, by Anthony Weldon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Contents Queen Elizabeth died at Richmond House on March 24th, 1602. The first that carried news thereof into Scotland was Sir Robert Carew, who was afterward made Governor of the King's then second son, Charles, Duke of York. The first man employed from Scotland to the English nobility for preparations of the King's coming into England was Sir Roger Aston. He was afterwards made from the King's barber, gentleman of his bedchamber. The King's Favourites 1. Sir George Hume, a kind of favourite for having been of some secret councils with the King whilst in Scotland, the chief of which was that of Gowrie's conspiracy. 2. Sir Robert Cecil, a favourite. His ill offices he did this nation, his Herodian disease and end. 3 and 4. Henry Howard and Thomas Howard, favourites. The principal managers of the state affairs in England then were Salisbury, Suffolk, etc. 
5. Mr. James Hay on High Favourite, etc. See his rise, etc. Passages concerning Sir Walter Raleigh. A notable discovery made by Sir Robert Mansell of a Spaniard stealing plate, which cleared the false imputation laid by them on the English. The king easily persuaded to retire himself by those managers of the state, of which Salisbury was the chief. Secretary Lake. Salisbury, Suffolk, and Northampton great getters, more than the whole bunch of the Scots, Dunbar excepted. Kelly, Annandale, and Carlisle vast consumers, especially Carlisle, of what they got. 6. Montgomery, for a time a favourite, upon whose wane, after a contention between the English and Scots, out of where the nation the next favourite should come, Carr arose a favourite. How tended and tendered by the king, when in a tilting with the Lord Dingwell he had broke his leg. Sir Thomas Overbury, taken into great favour by Carr. Salisbury and Suffolk, in favour of this new favourite, regardful of his creature Overbury, are both used by him, yet through his insolency both neglected. Northampton's plot upon Overbury for his scorn of him. Overbury, a tart reprover of Somerset, concerning Suffolk's daughter Essex's wife. He is therefore plotted against to be removed out of the way on an embassy to France or upon refusal, etc. Being committed to the tower, he was there poisoned. See the foulness of that business. After that, Somerset marries the lady, in which matter was seen the high corruption of the then times. In this favourite's time came over the Palsgrave, and married the king's daughter, the lady Elizabeth. Shortly after, Prince Henry died. His death foretold by Bruce, banished therefore by Salisbury, who died in May, the prince in November following. Ingram and Cranfield, projectors made use of in court, but like projectors as they were, kept under by Somerset, which were more highly regarded by the after-favourite, which was eight, favourite Mr. George Villiers. Zouche, Goring, Finnett, and Millicent, the court fools, as well as Archie, with whose jollity this favourite was ushered in. Winward brought in Secretary of State by Somerset, and by him unworthily used, ruined him by discovering the poisoning of Overbury. It being made publicly known unto the king, see his seeming serious charge upon the judges for their impartial sifting out and punishing the complotters thereof. The king's dissimulation to Somerset, who by a device of Sir George Moore's, after Alloway's lieutenant of the tower, was tamely led from the tower to his arraignment. Mrs. Turner, Weston, Franklin, and Sir Gervais Elwes executed for that business. This favourite displaces the well-deserving admiral, the Earl of Nottingham, and gets that place to himself. The next great office his power reaches at to dispose is Edgerton's Lord Chancellorship, to whom he sends Bacon for the seal, to whom Buckingham the favourite sends a message, where to see his answer. Buckingham's course to raise and maintain his kindred. Bacon's proud carriage, so soon as made Lord Chancellor, the king being soon after gone to Scotland. After him, degraded for his bravery by a parliament, comes Williams, Dean of Westminster, Bishop of Lincoln, who was in bribery inferior to none. The Lord Treasurer, Suffolk, being turned out, one of the aforenamed projectors, Cranfield, was brought in by Buckingham his censure in the House of Peers. He and the Prince go into Spain disguised and under the names of Jack and Tom Smith. Taking their way by France, the Prince eyed there that lady whom he after married. Through Buckingham's miscarriages in Spain and his spleen against Bristol, the match with Spain was dissolved. The King now hates Buckingham, Buckingham hates the King, which proved the King's suggested cause true after which his dark dealing with the king. See a passage from one of the king's servants to the duke. In the court of King Charles, the observations are, As his father's reign began with a great plague, his with a greater. He was not crowned with the wonted solemnity, nor took he the usual oath. With him arose also his father's favourite. The first parliament he called gave him two entire subsidies, etc., Buckingham, being questioned about the former king's death, dissolved that parliament, which was ill-relished by the people. 
Williams, the Lord Keeper, turned out of his place and Coventry put in. Buckingham sent into France for that lady the king had seen there. Through his instigation, the king prepares for a war against Spain and France. Wimbledon's unsuccessful expedition in Spain. Denby is sent to aid Rochelle. Buckingham's loss of many brave gentlemen in the Isle of Ré expedition, where comes in a large supplement which the former edition of this book had not. For these unjust quarrels management, the king pawned his plate to Amsterdam. Cottington sent to beg a peace with Spain, Rochelle's relief not really performed. Buckingham's ambition after higher titles and offices. Weston, after Cranfield, made Lord Treasurer by Buckingham's procure. Shifts to raise monies. Noy made the king's attorney, by whom many projects were put in practice. Buckingham, intending some great secret design abroad, was slain by Felton amongst whom the managing of affairs then was. After his death, no bettering in the state, but worse. Western, if not balanced by Lord, had been worse in tyrannising than Buckingham. Council table, etc., scourges to the people. Coventry, a very corrupt man, whose time reached to this very Parliament, yet not questioned for it. Finch made chief judge of the common pleas. Fees in all courts taken excessively. The bishops and other court clergy preached away the people's liberties and proprieties. Their turn now to lose both. Strafford, the ablest statesman since Salisbury, first brought in by Weston, he failed in his ignorance of the people's temper and of the king's disability and faithfulness in weighty matters and great agents. He was the greatest subject, not being a favourite, that ever was. Observations upon this king from his childhood. Certain observations before Queen Elizabeth's death. Finis. End of section 14. Recording by Patrick Wallace. End of the court and character of King James, whereunto is now added the court of King Charles, by Anthony Weldon.